Please consider Luke 15, verses 4 through 6, as a thought to help guide our conversation for tonight. The year 1975 was an awesome year. Many great things happened that year. Unfortunately, it was also a year with something that is still a mystery happened. And that is, on July 30th of that year, James Riddle Hoffa, known to the world as Jimmy Hoffa, disappeared. And to this date, what happened to him and his whereabouts cannot be accounted for. How ironic that his middle name is Riddle and his disappearance and death have been a riddle that no one has been able to solve. Surely you know that he was the president of the International Brotherhood of the Teamsters Union. Many have debated his legacy and his contribution to the concept of unions. At the same time, there are those who mention the fact that he had been found guilty and in fact in prison on several charges, including jury tampering, bribery, conspiracy, mail and wire fraud, not to mention his association with organized crime. I have no personal opinion as to the significance or insignificance of Jimmy Hoffa's role in unions and whether or not that has been a plus or minus for blue-collar workers. What I am intrigued by is the fact that this person who has certainly a checkered past, a person who has associated with individuals who are of the criminal element, that as recently as last year, there continues to be searches for his whereabouts. He is certainly presumed to be dead, but discovering his body has been an ongoing and an endless search. People have looked in houses, they've looked in a junkyard, they search the Giants Stadium. Many places have been considered as a place in which his body may have been buried. Much equipment, much money, books, movies, interviews, investigations, and so many things have been done to determine the whereabouts of Mr. James Riddle Hoffa. I've wondered why it is that there was such an endless search for him. On one hand, he has value like any other person if for no other reason he has value because his life is worth something as a human being, and certainly he has value in that there were those who loved him, including friends and family. They perhaps have also searched for his body continually because death, by way of a crime, deserves to be investigated and perpetrators of a crime demand or at least should be, that we demand accountability for those perpetrators. In like manner, you have to wonder why it is that in some instances, perhaps too many instances, we do not go to these extremes to search for those who have been lost from God's kingdom. We may say that they are imperfect people, who perhaps were too discouraged or too wishy-washy or too wavering in their faith. But keep in mind that even Jimmy Hoffa was an imperfect person, and yet someone thought that he was worth finding. What do we do about those who are lost among us? What do we do when we sit around our churches and see empty pews? When we see people who are no longer a part of the fellowship, in every city that I have preached in in this country, I have had people say to me, if every person who's a member of this church 
were present, we would not have room to seat them. But something happened in the course of the church, perhaps a leadership struggle, perhaps a struggle in a ministry, something in the person's personal life, some other problem that has surfaced that has caused a person to abandon their attendance in the church and perhaps have even abandoned their faith. To what extremes do we go to to seek out those who are wayward? How much attention and energy, how much focus, how much consideration do we give to restoring those souls? Do our hearts burn for wayward souls? Do we concern ourselves with the fact that they will have to give an account in eternity? As a result, are we compassionate about their eternal destiny? In Luke chapter 15, in verse number four, Jesus speaks, and he uses a parable about lost sheep. He says, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he had found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep, which was lost. What is interesting as a result of this coronavirus is many people, and even some on this call, have said that they have spent this time catching up with long-lost friends. They have called family members they have not talked to, ex-co-workers, ex-classmates, the social connection has been of great benefit to many people. But have we taken this time to go after that one sheep who is wayward? Have we taken this time to send cards, to call? Or have we spent time in prayer asking God to help restore those sheep who are no longer a part of the fold? We must first of all, have an outward focus as a church. Too often our attention and our focus is on coddling immature people inside the church at the same time that comes at the expense of not restoring those who are lost. How much of our budget, how much of our programming, how much of our attention is focused on reaching the lost? Oh, I know that's the preacher's job. Do you know some people's job is to simply figure out what the preacher's job is? That brings me to our second point. Not only must we have an outward focus, but we must own our role and responsibility in helping others to get to heaven. The consequences of eternal damnation are too great for us to ignore the concern of reaching those who were once among us. And third, we must take this opportunity now to act. Because when we read Luke chapter 15, we discover an important principle that there is not only joy for those who lost something precious to them, but there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over a person who is repenting, who is being restored. As we consider this concept of restoring others, Maybe we need to get outside of ourselves, stop thinking about how God can bless us and start thinking about how much God has already blessed us and how, other, how we can reach others and restore others. What a shame it would be on Judgment Day to stand next to someone who perhaps will be eternally lost for them to look at us and say, you never called me, you never contacted me. You never told me about Jesus. You never reached out to me. I believe that if the world could go after its own and years later continue to search for Mr. Jimmy Hoffa, the church ought to be in search of those who once belonged to the kingdom. We may not be successful as they were not successful in recovering his body. But we will never know what success or failure can be had if we never try. I believe it's great for you to use your gifts, 
to do things in the body of Christ. And it's great for you to ask God to bless you with all of the things that he blesses you with. But why don't you use your gift to invite someone else to again have a relationship with God and use your time in prayer and ask God to help you as you seek those who have gone astray. This has been another edition of A Few Minutes with the Minister with Words from the Master.